Okay, welcome back to Tupo TV and thank you for joining The Average Golfer. I am, uh, if you've been watching a couple of the videos that have been released of late, then yes, I am still here on Mizuno Day. I'm getting working my way through the set from hot metal into forged. And now I'm at the player's end of things, which is the tour version in the 919s. Really interested to see how this one performs in the hands of the average golfer. I want to say something that I've said on both of the previous videos is that these things are absolute stunners on the eye. Each of them, each of the three models are absolutely gorgeous to look at. This 919 Tour is a completely matte finish, matte chrome in its colour, very minimalistic than you can see from the images that are thrown up on screen there now. And I've got to say, it looks absolutely gorgeous, this does. It gets that little bit more compact, as you'd expect from the Tour Club. That top line has again got that little bit thinner. The whole profile of the club just shrinks down that little bit more. And for the average golfer, it's probably going to be a chosen few that would go down this route um, for this kind of club, just from a confidence level, to be quite honest with you, because when you sit behind these behind the ball, it really is do start to question your ability to find the centre of the club. Having said that, this is as pure as it gets in terms of a forged iron. Um, obvious expectancy in terms of what Mizuno claim in terms of how this feels, but they're also talking about added stability across the club face for this type of club. And we'll find that out very, very soon. But if I just start off with some images of the club head placed behind the ball, you'll get an idea of how compact it starts to look. Probably, I mean, for me again, not overly compact in how it looks and the top line not overly thin either um, but minimal offset now we're looking at when this ball is uh, is at a dress i think like i said for my eye but again i'm always drawn towards this type of club in terms of how i think it looks and how i think it feels and i'm just at the level where i question whether or not i can consistently play some decent golf with these things and uh, that's always the compromise so what we're looking at is we're back up to 30 four degrees worth of loft now so the the weakest lofted as you'd expect and the more traditional lofted out of the set again so we're expecting to see higher launch angle steeper descent angle and some higher spin numbers and a drop off in distance as you'd expect and that's what we've seen so far in the first two clubs that i have uh, that i've tried so no more talking to be done. I think let's hit some golf balls and see how the average golfer gets on with the tour model of the 919s. I smile because it's absolutely gorgeous and a dress. Let's pull that one a little bit down the left hand side. solid ball solid ball and I mean the big thing is here this feels absolutely superb I'll pull the first one second ball really decent but the app the feel out of both of them is well I think as Mizuno would say nothing feels like a Mizuno I think nothing feels like forged anyway oh that's pure Final ball there was absolutely bang out the middle and the feeling is what you cannot get with any other club other than a forge club and a pure forge club like that 919 tour. The problem is, is how often I've hit three there, one of them was pure out the middle, it felt absolutely sensational. The problem is out of 30, 40 iron shots that I may hit in a round of golf, how many will I get out the middle? Can I perform consistently off? I don't know, that's the question. I think when you're buying a set of irons is matching something that suits your level, your level of consistency. Because either way, whichever of the three clubs you put in your hand, consistency is always gonna be something that changes with average golfers. Um, the question is, how much more forgiveness is there in this compared to, let's say at the beginning of the review with the hot metal. But anyway, that's a separate question to be asked we're looking at the 919 tour right now i'll carry on it some more golf balls we'll switch camera positions have a sit down and go through the numbers 
Right, my final evaluation. I've sit here and done two. This is the third. This is the final line. It's the tour. It is the mini one. It is the one that is aimed at the better player. Um, and I'm not sure whether that's right or wrong, but that's who it's aimed at. I have to say that I found these absolutely delightful to hit. Um, as I did with its predecessor in the tour model. They're a superb feeding iron, they really are. And um, this is an interesting one because I mentioned in the uh, in the other two irons, have they, um, have they changed much from the previous models? And I sort of think, no, they haven't. I think if I said anything about the tour version, um, what they've aimed at doing again is a little bit more forgiveness across the face and some ball speeds across the face that are uh, more even. The numbers suggest they may have done that. It's hard to say, it's hard to be exact. I mean, you need to be hitting 100, 150, 200 balls to have a look across that and then comparing them. So, you know, you need to be a lot more scientific than just throwing up uh, 10 golf shots up in the air. But for me, they perform consistently well. That's all I will say. Um, we got, Again, as expected, the difference, the interesting bit for me was that I played the forged iron with uh, two degrees stronger in loft, but my numbers were only the same as these. So 110 ball speed is identical. 21.7 launch angle was very, very similar. My spin number with this club was better on average at 5.3, but averaged, again, barring the odd few more, five and a half thousand again, which is what I'd expect from this club with this loft and that's a good number for me. We lost a few shots in terms of measurements on uh, on peak height, so brought it right down to 27, but it, it was, a for me, a visible, visibly a higher lofting iron and a greater peak height. But they got, without losing too much distance, 155 um, carry, which I found to be, uh, and again, descent angle was really messed around because unfortunately we lost a couple of shots, I should have deleted those out, but, Descent angle, I think, without my maths, uh, taking those two zeros at the equation, maybe 46 to 47 in terms of degrees descent angle. But all numbers and my evaluation would be this. Superb feel, superb to look at. Absolute stunning set of irons. Um, I said to you during the review when I was hitting them, the question is for average golfers, can we decide to put these in the bag? and feel like we can perform with them consistently well enough. Uh, I would love to think so, and I would love to gain these clubs. Um, these and a number of others of the Fords are just, they're, they're so, so nice to hit. And even though it may only be now and again that we get a decent one out of the middle, sometimes I think it is worth it, to be honest with you, because these were like buttery soft. Nothing feels like a Mizuno. Well, they certainly don't in this case, because they were excellent. Um, not massively different from the previous model, though I have to say that again, because the previous model was once again a massively good performer. Anyway, that is me done. End of the 919 series. Uh, thumbs up, thumbs down, comment down below, subscribe if you don't already, all those things. Tell me what you think of the video. Tell me if you think I, last video I did was on the TS3. I was accused of waffling too much on this. I've kept it very, very brief, so you know what to do, accuse, accuse me of being too brief and missing too much stuff out. You never keep people happy on this thing, let me tell you. Anyway, I'm waffling, so see you soon.